Coming up next on Creativity, we welcome you into our studio and explore the realm of street art with a special guest. Stay tuned. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Creativity. This is Lou McNally. And as Henry David Thoreau once said, the world is but a canvas to our imagination. And on this episode, we're going to meet an artist who uses the sidewalk as her canvas. Please welcome our painter for this evening, Chelsea Austin, who's here to tell us a little bit about the uh, mind-blowing portraits and murals and faux 3D masterpieces that she makes out of everyday sidewalk chalk and the pavement. Thanks for coming tonight. Appreciate it very much, Chelsea. Yep, no problem. Good to see you. Now, tell us a little bit, once we get started here, about uh, about the history of chalk art. How far back does it go? Um, it actually kind of originated in early 16th century Italy. That far back? Yeah. <laughs> so um, poor artists would take to the streets using mm -hmm. whatever material they had to um, draw out uh, religious uh, paintings found normally found in the church. Okay. Um, that way, as people would walk by, they would feel pressured to <laughs> pay <course>. tribute <laughs> to the Madonna, and um, that's where it started. And it transitioned a long way from then. Yes, uh, it has. Yeah. I mean, was it popular, say, last century or the 1800s or? Um, it's kind of been like a slow build. It recently got popular again um, when they started reviving the festivals. Oh, okay. All right. So there are chalk art festivals. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, we'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. In the meantime, how did you get started? Um, well, my ac actually, my high school used to host a small festival for really? distant students, um, and I participated in that every year. And then I didn't do anything for a few years because I didn't really realize it was a thing. Right. Um, and then I just happened upon uh, a festival, mm -hmm. and I started drawing, and I joined an association of chalk artists, and I here I am. I love it. That's great. All right. Well, we want to remind the folks at home that uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, call in and have your question for Chelsea answered right here on the show. The number to call is 1-800-901-9238. That number again, one 800 901 Nine two three eight. Now, Chelsea, I got to ask you: Did you start off as a as an artist? Uh, I mean, like drawing, painting, sculpting. Yeah, yeah I work in several mediums. Um, I do pencil and paint and graphic design. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that sounds good. We got some uh, video here uh, okay. that we're going to take a quick look at, and this, I think, is yeah. This is a time lapse. Of course, you're not drawing that fast. No, I wish. <laughs> Where was this done? Um, this was done in Altamont last weekend. Okay, now. How much time, I mean, I know we've got it sped up here, but how much time did it actually take you to, to do this? Well, I think so far I've been working on it for um, maybe one or two hours. Wow. Uh, and what managed to be, get recorded is about 30 minutes worth of work, give oh, or take. Yeah. Holy smokes. Now, this is not, uh, <laughs> this is not drawing hopscotch no. on the sidewalk, <laughs> is it? My goodness. Now, do you have to use a, a special kind of, uh, of chalk? Um, soft pastel is recommended or regular street art. Or yeah, that like Street kids, yeah, <laughs> that kids would use. No kidding. Yeah, Crayola and the same stuff. Same thing. That sounds great. That's uh, that's tremendous. Uh, now, have you got an idea? Oh, I see you got a little picture right there. So you have an idea in in mind already what you're going to do. But I noticed that you're working from the top down. You can't really crawl up on top of that and work on the middle, can you? Uh, well, you can, but you it's more difficult. You have to do what we call street yoga and get into <laughs> weird positions like to twister. reach the center of your piece or bring cardboard. Um, but I like to start at the focal point of my image, which is normally at the top and work down from there. Well, now that's different from most artists because, you know, uh, somebody working in oil or something like that, they'll, they'll put a wash down on the canvas and then put this element in and then that. You really kind of have to have the whole thing figured out in your mind before you start, don't you? Yeah. Um, chalk art is very much a performance art, so you want at every point them to be entertained and see something happening. Okay. So we have uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, tools that you use right here. I mean, this... Uh, that's a chunk of chalk. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a large piece of chalk that I actually got at the dollar store. Oh my gosh. Um, I use it as a base to cover 
uh, a large area very quickly. It's especially good for flesh tones or like backgrounds. Oh, it's kind of like your wash. Yeah. Or the wide brush, so sort to speak. Sort of, yeah. Okay, and then we have this wide palette of colors right here. These, these look like they're a little brighter. Yes. Now, what's the idea with that? Um, they, have... they have a higher pigment content. Mm -hmm. They're much more vibrant. These are pretty much a standard for most chalk artists as they're given out at festivals. Um, but we use them to create everything. Uh, now, do you have to do anything special with the chalk itself? Do uh, you have to cover it up or, you know, do Well, when I store it? Yeah. No, um, I kind of just put it back in its box or in little um, Tupperware, mm -hmm. and I keep it in my car. <laughs> <laughs> and that seems to work pretty well. But obviously, you don't buy all of your art supplies at the art store, if you can get this at the dollar store. Right? Correct. Yeah, that works pretty good. Now, I've seen plenty of people that, uh, you know, out, out in the street, they're painting, you know, and they have this little palette full of colors, mm -hmm. right? That's what this is, isn't it? Yeah. Look at this here. We got all different colors and sizes and shapes of, uh, of, of chalk. My goodness, you got yellows and, and blues and greens. You can see that those have been used. <laughs> but that looks just like a just like a, a, a an artist's palette. It just happens to be solid, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Well, let me ask you briefly. What's your what's your favorite uh, uh, chalk art picture? Uh, my favorite piece that I did. I actually just did recently. Um, I recreated. Uh, one of my favorite well, pieces of art. From... You brought it along here too, yeah. didn't you? Let's see if we can get it out and show it to the folks at home. There you go. So the original artist is Josephine Wall, and the piece. And where where is she from? Uh, Canada, I believe. Okay. And yeah. um, the piece is named Iris, Keeper of the Rainbow. Yep. What, now, do you have to uh, put anything on top of that, like? Uh, any kind a of fixative or something? No, every so often I use um, hairspray, mm -hmm. um, or you can use artist quality workable fixative, right. but hairspray works just as fine. Well, I gotta ask you, uh, how long did that last? Um, it actually rained, I think, the following day, so it didn't last very long. My goodness. Um, for a certain amount of time, it something? stains the sidewalk. Yep. So I've come back a year later and still seen remnants of a no piece. No kidding. My goodness. Okay, so there really is some pigment in there. We're going to have another little, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> bit of video here. Okay. And you're going to tell us a little bit about this. Uh, this is actually a festival in progress right here, right? Yep. This was Altamont last weekend mm -hmm. at their art expo. And everybody on the street is a street artist, each doing their own piece. There was about 17 artists um, wow. that attended at now, this now, particular Can you festival. make a living doing this? Um, you can. It's very difficult, like most forms of art. You um, primarily large 3D artists mm -hmm. are the ones who are able to make a very good living off of it. So when you see the email forward come through that has these amazing 3D pieces, sure, yeah. those are the ones, the guys that get to do it for a living. Okay, so I mean, you said back in the 16th century, people would draw, you know, Madonnas on the sidewalk mm -hmm. and people would tithe to that, you know, give the artist some, do you put a tip jar out when you? When yes, you... I do. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I have a little sign and I have a piggy bank. Yep. Um, I've seen some artists, uh, there's a guy from Georgia, he has a gas can. A gas can, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah, well, as a musician, I can tell you, I know all about the tip jar. Some days it's really good, and some days it's not really good. <laughs> so, okay, so the, what happened here? Uh, well, this festival actually got rained out, so we were all kind of hoping it would be a light rain. Wow. So we tried to protect our piece with a large piece of plastic. Okay, it's just thin plastic, like saran wrap or something. Yeah. Right? And duct tape. Um, just yeah. much larger, and then we duct tape it down. Okay, so if, that's not a finished work yet. No. Okay. And then this was after the rain because the screen wasn't too successful. No. It rained pretty hard that day. Did you have to repair any any of that? Yeah, I went over all of it again. Oh my gosh, I had to go over all of it. Yeah, all there right. was uh, lots of muddiness and there's And, and there's the finished uh, product right there. Yep. Oh my gosh, that's not a self-portrait, right? No, that's uh, pink. <laughs> that's pink. It took about four or five hours. Oh my gosh. Second day. I, uh, it seems that we have a phone call. Okay. And uh, let's see what we've got on the line there. Hello, good evening. Who's on the line? Hello, this is Romeo. Hey, Romeo. How are you tonight in Port Orange? What is your question for Chelsea? Uh, my question is, uh, is there such a thing as, like, she mentioned 3D art, and does she do anything like that? Is it both difficult? 
Great question. Yeah, we've seen some of those uh, examples of 3D art, uh, you know, on, online and things like that. You do that, don't you? Yeah, um, I'm still at the beginning stages of getting to do the kind of stuff that you see all over the place on the internet. Um, it's very difficult, and there's different types of one-point perspective or anamorphic 3D art. What does art. that mean, anamorphic? Uh, just the way that you force the perspective. Oh, okay. Um, right. so, so it only looks right from like one angle? Correct, and that's okay. the same with single an point right or multi-point um, Is that 3D. Your work? That's your work? Yes, that is wow. a spider that I that did. It looks like it's coming right up out of the, out of the pavement. Um, and that's just perspective. Um, you, really with 3D, you don't get the full effect mm -hmm. of how much it comes out to you until you take a picture. Until you take a picture. You yeah. mean our eyes are not... Uh, used to that kind of thing? Or yeah, they're, they're smarter than the ground. So <laughs> the camera lens, how it takes in the, it all, it creates. So that's where you get the biggest effect. There's another yeah. one right there. How long does it take to make those smaller ones like that? Those look like they're not as big. Uh, yeah, the spider only took 30 minutes. Um, this 30 one right minutes. here took about eight hours. Wow. Um, I, it's about eight by eight. Yeah. So uh, what do you need to do to, to get it all figured out? Do you have to do some calculations in your head? And um, I am actually a freehand artist. Freehand? I don't, oh, yeah, okay. so I don't do any mathematical planning ahead of time. Wow. Um, there are a few different types of methods to approach street art. Uh, gridding is most common. And, sure, yeah, I, can, I can see that, yeah. And yeah. Uh, that involves math. Yep. And then there's also a technique called pouncing. Yep. where you actually draw out your image either freehand or with gridding on a piece of paper. And then you poke holes along all your lines and then you force baby powder through the holes. It pounds, it pounds through it. Yeah. yeah. And then when you lift it up, You've got a line you have an outline with which to work. We have had a number of artists on the show uh, over the course of the last few weeks. And uh, one of the questions we like to ask is, is how they feel about their own art. And something comes to mind we had somebody who does ice, ice sculptures. Mm -hmm. And I had to ask, and the same question would go for you, how do you feel about having this art disappear? Well, it doesn't really disappear to me. Uh, my street art reaches more people than any of my other art because hundreds, sometimes thousands of people walk by and they're all taking pictures, they're all putting it on Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. and everybody is liking and seeing it. So in my mind, it, it lives on. Okay, all right, well it didn't before, before we had all those uh, digital images. Yes, yeah, so it would be probably a lot harder if I what, couldn't take a picture. What about the, the, the physicality of the work? I mean, most artists can stand up at an easel and, and paint like that. What about, uh, you're on the ground. It's not actually as bad as it looks for the most part. Um, at the end of the day, sometimes you have a sore lower back, but I tend to sit or lay down while I work, yeah. so it's kind of just hanging out in the sun. So is it, is it ever possible to do the work and then put it on the ground? Um, if you use a removable surface, um, like hardboard, mm -hmm. uh, say if you're chalking inside where there's carpet or there's just no way to work I gotcha. anywhere yeah. else. Okay, well, let me ask you about these festivals. Now, you said how, there's how many around here? Um, there's at least 15 in Florida alone. Wow. And what happens if you win one of those? Have you ever won one, by the yes. way? Yes. You did? Yes. Ooh, congratulations. Thank you. All right. Uh, what did you get for it? Um, normally, you get a uh, prize. Mm -hmm. Money award Good. and sometimes a trophy or a ribbon. Okay, now does that. that get you an invite into a bigger festival, or do you just travel to the next uh, big one in the next big town? Um, I travel regardless to a whole bunch of different festivals. If you do a really good job, um, regardless of whether you win or not, mm -hmm. and a coordinator to a different festival is there, they will sometimes invite you to come to their festival. Um, whether it's just a regular one or a more distinguished, harder to get in one. What's the biggest piece of chalk art you've seen? Um, I'm not really sure. I'd say 20 by 40 feet. What's that? 20 by 40 feet, maybe. 20 by 40 feet? Yes. There's a huge festival in Sarasota. Um, it's just blocks large, and they bring in some of the world's most famous street artists. Wow. And the pieces that large normally have a team of artists. I was going to ask about that, yeah. And yeah. they do the full piece. Wow. Uh, okay, so what's it take to become a world-class street artist? <laughs> well, anybody can start. You How do you start? How would you get started? Um, you just sign up at a festival. You can, unless you want to do it in your driveway. Yep. Um, but we actually have an association 
um, that has a full listing of all of all the, the festivals. festivals. Yeah. And um, you just go, and chalk artists are very friendly. We are all too willing to share our secrets and show you how to do art yourself. It sounds a little like quilting. <laughs> Maybe, I've never quilted. Well, everybody gets together, they're all happy, and they all trade patterns and all that kind of yes, stuff. Yes, we, we trade sticks of chalk, and uh, we share with each other what we're going to draw. Mm -hmm. And some of the funnest parts about going to the festivals is seeing all your friends that you haven't seen. And what they're doing. Now, how much prep time does it take? Uh, for you to decide what you're going to draw at a festival? Well, it really just depends. I've decided uh, as late as the night before. Um, <laughs> sometimes I plan months in advance. Mm -hmm. It just depends on if the festival has a theme or if there's a certain image I just really want to chalk and I'm waiting for the right festival. Uh -huh. Now, do you see yourself doing this full time as an artist? I would love to. Um, I do, do you see that happening? I think I'm slowly headed that way. Yeah, I like to think optimistically about that. Okay. Um, I definitely, each year, I get busier. Okay. Um, in a number of pieces of, uh, of art, you can actually take lessons from a master or mm -hmm. something like that. Do you have that in your field? Yes. Um, several uh, festivals offer workshops oh, with a more go. experienced artist. That way you, to get started. Yes, where you can attend. Um, you can also contact a street artist and say, hey, can you set up a time and teach me how to do this in my driveway? And How difficult is it to learn? I mean, is it is it just learning the, the same things you'd learn to do pastels or there's some particular tricks that you need to know? I think um, you can get started at any point because you're kind of, we all used to play with chalk when we were little. Yeah. You just put it down and then you rub it in. <laughs> and then... Uh, it's building on that skill set until you get a lot better. Well, you're actually going to give us a little demonstration here, aren't you? Yes. Well, come on over. We'll get you over here <laughs> onto, your, onto your easel and uh, with your pastels, and we'll take a look. Okay. We got another phone call coming in, too, I believe. And uh, why don't we just ask uh, who's on the line? This is Scotty. Uh, Scotty. Uh, okay, cool. What, what is your question for uh, Chelsea tonight? Did uh, she go to college to become an artist? That's a great question. Did you take any training at the college level? Um, no, I did get my associates at Brevard Community College, mm -hmm. but I was kind of already a uh, practicing artist at that point. Yep. It was really just more to get it. Okay, so did you... But no uh, real formal art classes. Did you ever really think about going back and trying those other kinds of art that you learned about in that course? Um, not really. I like, when I learn a new art form, I like to learn just from artists working. Mm -hmm. um, by taking workshops, a lot of galleries host, and I, I go that way. I see you can also multitask because you're talking to me at the same time as you're doing, uh, doing your work here. Uh, what is the uh, uh, base that you're using here? Is that just masonite or something? Yeah, this is hardboard. Hardboard, um, okay. I talked about it a little bit earlier. It's really good for when you're working somewhere mm -hmm. where you can't work on the floor. And normally I don't work on an easel. I put it on the floor and I continue and work to work on, on the, the floor. floor. I mean, yeah. we could make that happen if you really want. <laughs> no, <laughs> this is okay. That works okay. All right, so when's your next festival? Um, uh, my next festival is two weeks from now. I was going to be at one this weekend, but I got contracted out to do... Um, a Friday a fest, a commission work? thing, yeah, in Fort Myers. That is very cool. So that you do get commission work, just like you know other artists do. Yes, I'm actually really excited about this one. It's with Circus Arts United, and it's yeah. just a group of um, performance artists who oh, okay. have been hired out to do their thing at the street festival. So how do you uh, how do you describe this as performance art? I mean, is it the fact that it's actually being made and people watch that happening? Yeah, people get to watch you create uh -huh. what you're working on. They get to interact with you, ask questions. Like ask, I'm doing now. Yeah, <laughs> see a piece really develop. My goodness, that is great. Okay, what about uh, working at theme parks? We see people with pastels all the time. Um, Disney actually has a Festival of the Masters uh -huh. where they have a huge art festival and chalk art is one of its features okay. um, and I participated in that last year. It's right. really fun because you just go out for a few days and create art 
Um, they also had another event called Limited Time Magic, which was mm -hmm. especially fun for me because you can't normally chalk Disney characters. So I got to chalk Pocahontas during Why that time. Why can't you normally chalk Disney characters? Well, they're copyrighted. Oh, of course. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be doing that. Uh, okay, so uh, what is the biggest, most famous festival? I guess it really just depends. In Florida, Sarasota and Fort Worth are mm -hmm. the most popular um, festivals and have the biggest draw of people. Once you go outside of Florida, I'm not really sure because they have them in Italy and all over Europe and different parts in California and Mexico. All sunny weather places, more, yes. than, <laughs> more than not. Um, you know, I mean, I, I actually work as a, uh, a meteorologist in real life. And I gotta ask you a question. Do you pay attention to the weather forecast before you head to a festival? Well, I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes I'm just, you don't think about rain. It's a four letter word. I see. You're not allowed to say it and you're not allowed to think it and you just, <laughs> You hope for the best. You hope for the best. That's great. So you're going to have a, a festival in a couple of weeks. You've got uh, a piece to do already. Is, is there a gallery where you can put your work, I mean, take a digital image of it, and, and somebody do that? Um, not really. We kind of just use Facebook or our own personal websites mm -hmm. to display our work. Um, the Florida Chalk Artists Association has a Facebook, and from every festival we post all of the art that was created there for okay. people to go and check out if they weren't able to come. And what about things like uh, your, your commission work? Uh, I mean, are these for like private parties or corporate events or? Um, it's anyone, um, whether it's a birthday or a street festival or um, a convention, anyone can hire out an artist. Ever been asked to do a 3D hopscotch where you know number 10 is a big cavern or something? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> that thing, that'd be kind of interesting. Well, you've, got some, uh, you've got some stuff going on here now, that's for sure. Now, do you ever use just paper or anything to practice, or do you get right down to uh, what you're going to do? Nope, I just kind of get started. I draw on paper when I'm doing non-chalk art, but I really don't plan too much of what I'm doing ahead of time. I just I pick my image, and I go out on the street, and I start. So that might, mess, might make it easier for you to just, you know, pack up the, the chalk and, and drive away from your art, too, huh? Yeah. It was part of the reason I keep it in my trunk. I never have to worry about anything. If I get the sudden urge to draw on a friend's sidewalk, I can. It's you there. You get your jewels with you the entire time. Yeah. And so, okay. Uh, now, have you ever run into places where people say, no, you can't, you can't put your, your art here? Well, if you're ever going to chalk somewhere, you definitely want permission first. Um, but if I normally chalk at festivals or places where I was hired, so they have pre-authorization mm -hmm. for me to do that. Um, so now you're just using the pastel and, and, your, and your fingers to rub it in. Do you ever use some of the other tools that pastel artists use, like you know, a charcoal stick or... Uh, you know, sponges or things like that? Um, sometimes, uh, especially for larger areas, I use a sponge to mm -hmm. just blend everything without having to use my fingers. Yeah. Or um, some artists cut down a paintbrush to where there's almost no brush left. Wow. And use that to really spread the higher end yeah. pigment farther. Wow. That's tremendous. That's just it's just unbelievable. That really is cool. Um, how long have you been actually doing this? Um, I think about three years. Really? That's all? Three years? Yeah. But that's, that's kind of cool. Um, any, how about some of the pieces that you've done? Any that have any special meaning to them? Or? Um, yeah, every now and again I do a piece that means something to me. Um, I think a year or two ago, I did my dad's uh, wedding portrait mm -hmm. um, of him and his wife. And then um, every now and again, I chalk relatives. I want to do uh, my sister-in-law had mm -hmm. twins yep. last year. So I'm hoping to chalk them in Sanford. 
So if you do it as a, as a family portrait, uh, uh, you do it on a, uh, on a you know, sidewalk or, or wherever, you, and then make sure that you get good pictures of it, right? Right. And then the pe people can put the pictures on the mantelpiece. Right. I normally, when I'm doing um, someone in my family, I normally do it at a festival that they're able to drive to so they can see mm -hmm. it in person. Well, that's something else, boy. I mean, you're working, you're, that's, that's happening pretty quickly over there. It really is. That's quite good. Uh, how much time would you spend on a normal one? You said before it could be anywhere from three to five hours. I mean, are there some that you could burn off and... Yeah, four hours is kind of my quickest if I'm doing uh, maybe a three by five piece, mm -hmm. maybe slightly bigger. It depends on how simple of a piece I want to choose. Mm -hmm. um, the longest I have worked on a piece is about 23 hours. 23 hours, my goodness. And where, if you could go right now to a festival, all expenses paid, you could do whatever you want with it, where would you go? I would go to Italy. Italy? Yeah. Right back to where they started it. Yeah. That's tremendous. Um, and they're still doing it there, right? Yes. Okay. Sometimes the Europeans get a little ahead of us, and there's nothing we can do about it. But <laughs> that's just tremendous. Doesn't that look great, huh? My goodness. Well, you know, unfortunately, I think we've uh, come pretty close to the end of the show here. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to offer to a, a budding street artist? Um, advice? Just come out and try it. Email an artist ahead of time or a festival and tell them that you would like to start and we'll help you Simple as get that. it started. All right. Thank you very much. We've come to the end of the show now and we'd like to thank Chelsea again for being with us today. But if you at home have a question that uh, you didn't get answered during the program, you can email us at WDSC at DaytonaState.edu or you can visit Chelsea on her website, which is lostfingerprints.blogspot.com. Lost Fingerprints dot blogspot dot com and maybe she'll tell you where you can get started too and we'll get your questions answered as well thanks a lot for watching tonight this is Lou McNally we'll see you next time on Creativity.